In this video, we're going to have a look at second order differential equations in a particular case where the auxiliary equation has complex roots. So we're going to do a little bit of a proof first, and then we'll do a couple of example questions on, on how to actually solve them. So if you're not that interested in the proof and just want to get straight on how to solve these types of equation, skip forward a bit. Otherwise, we'll start on the proof now. So the auxiliary equation is am squared plus bm plus c equals zero for reasons we've described in a previous video. So when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, that'll give complex roots. So if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, that gives two roots to the auxiliary equation. Root one, m1 we're gonna call it, which is alpha plus beta i. And the complex conjugate of that must also be a root. So therefore, a minus beta i must be a root as well. So keep an eye on these numbers, alpha and beta. Because what we're going to propose now, that the solution to the entire differential equation is y equals, I'm going to call it e to the alpha x times a constant sine of beta x, where beta is the coefficient of i, i.e. the imaginary part of the solution to the auxiliary equation, plus b cos of beta x. And that there is the key point in this video, so let's put a box around that. Whenever b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, the auxiliary equation, it gives these solutions here. So the solution to the whole equation is that there. And now we're going to prove it. So the proof. So what we're going to start off with, we'll start off at this stage here. We're going to assume that these are solutions. So we've got y equals a e to the alpha plus beta i x. And we've done a proof why that's the case in a previous video. Uh, the one that initially introduced the auxiliary equation. Plus b e to the alpha minus beta i times x. And what we're going to do now, we're going to try and rearrange this here into that form there. So equals a e to the alpha times e to the beta i plus b e to the alpha e to the minus beta i. Now notice that this here, e to the beta i, and this here, e to the minus beta i, are both complex numbers in exponential form. So let's expand those using the identity e to the i theta is identical to cos theta plus i sine theta. So that's equal to a e to the alpha cos of beta x plus i sine of beta x. Then we've got b e to the alpha and then we've got cos of minus beta x plus i sine of minus beta x. Now notice that these all have an e to the alpha in common, so let's take that out as a factor. So e to the alpha, then we've got a cos of beta x plus a i sine beta x plus b cos, and cos of minus beta x is the same as cos of beta x by symmetry of the cos graph. Then sine of minus beta x is minus sine of beta x, again, by symmetry of the sine graph. So take, then we've got b i sine of beta x. So now let's gather up all the cos beta x's and the sine beta x's together. So that becomes e to the alpha. So we've got cos of beta x times a plus b. Then we've got i sine 
of beta x a minus b equals e to the alpha cos of beta x times a constant, let's call it p, plus sine of beta x. And what we're going to do now, we're going to take this i into the constant bracket there. So it becomes sine of beta x a i minus b i equals e to the alpha p cos of beta x plus q. So a i minus b i is going to be q sine of beta x. What's notable here is that p and q can be complex. That's not to say they have to be. Just remember that the real numbers are contained within the complex numbers as well. So I've just made a more general statement. So the reals contained within the complex. So when I say p and q are complex, I don't mean they strictly have to have a real and a non-zero imaginary part. If I say they're complex, that covers them being real numbers as well. So that's an important point. So I've proved here what I set out to prove. I proved that that's a solution there because I took the original form of the solution, worked it through to get something in exactly the same form. So we've proved it. So now let's do an example question. So there's an example question there. D2y by dx squared plus 4dy by dx plus 13y equals zero. Okay, so now that I've got that, let's actually do the auxiliary equation. Let's solve it. m squared plus 4m plus 13 equals zero. So we'll not bother using the quadratic formula. We'll put it straight in the calculator for quickness. So we'll go to the polynomial solver for a degree 2 polynomial, a quadratic. 1m squared plus 4m plus 13 equals 0, which means that the solutions to m are alpha plus or minus beta i, which in this case was minus 2 plus or minus 3i. So we've got alpha equals minus 2 and beta equals 3. Therefore, the solutions are y equals e to the minus 2x, that's our alpha, a sine of beta x plus b cos of beta x. And that's that. That's it done. Easy as that. So let's do another one that has just imaginary roots because we haven't really explicitly covered that case yet. But it is covered by all the work that we've just done. So how about solve d2y by dx squared plus 9y equals 0. Which means that m squared plus 9 equals 0. Which means that m squared equals minus 9. Which means that m equals plus or minus 3i if we square root both sides. So here we've got alpha plus or minus uh, beta i. Well here alpha, the real part equals 0 and beta equals 3. Therefore y equals e to the 0x, e to the 0, sine of 3x plus a sine of 3x rather plus b cos of 3x. And this constant at the front, eat the naught is just 1, so we can get rid of that. 1 times that. So just leave that solution there. So we only have a trig part when the roots of the auxiliary equation are purely imaginary. So the textbook makes two cases of this. The textbook looks at the case where the solutions are complex and separately where they're imaginary and makes two cases of them. I don't think that's necessary. I think they can just be combined into one single case like we've just shown. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.